Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new let's play of Gear City. Gear City is an extremely impressive indie simulation and management game about running your own car company and designing your own cars. The game is actually quite complicated, so instead of at length talking about the game and its mechanics, I'm just gonna go about playing it and tell you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it as we go. So with that said, we are going to start right now. So the new game that we are going to create is going to be called Let's Play. And we have four possible starting year choices. We can start in the 1900, 1930, 1950, or 1980. I'm gonna go with the very early one, which is the 1900. It's the beginning of the 20th century. The technological advancements of the Industrial Revolution has spurred growth in the many Western European nations. The invention of the Bessemer process in steel manufacturing has spurred a second wave of industrial growth. Politically, the Spanish-American War has recently ended, much of Africa is colonized by European nations, and tensions are growing in Europe. Many car companies were founded in this time, most failed. Will yours? The dawn of the age of automobile is about to begin. Now, the starting year will influence many, many things, so it's best to choose it wisely. But I found that the 1900 is the best one, because, you know, it's fun to design the veterans and enjoy making them and selling them. Second choice that we have is select a difficulty. Now, there's easy, normal and hard. Despite I usually play on hard in many other games, I'm gonna go with normal here. Which is not as easy as you might think, because the game, as mentioned, is extremely complicated and there's also a second thing to take into consideration when you are starting a new game. You need to choose a place where to start. Now, the two that are easiest are probably New York in the United States and London in the United Kingdom. Uh, I'd say that uh, New York is actually easier, despite being a bit poorer than London. New York will get much less hit by the First World War than it's going to break in 14 years in Europe. Now, as you click on a city, you will get a number of statistics here. You will get the population, the per capita, the projected growth, a lot of industrial statistics, status and corporate tax. Now, population and per capita are the most important. Population decides how many people there are to buy your car. Per capita designs or tells you how much uh, purchasing power average people in this location have. So you can see that, for example, New York is 327, London, which I believe is the most uh, powerful and most rich, or the richest, not most rich, but richest um, city in the game is 367, while the car, for example, has 27, which is not enough for a motorcycle. Uh, so, with that said, let's move on to the next uh, next statistic, which is projected growth. Uh, this one just tells you how well or how fast the place that you are going to play in uh, will grow. Infrastructure and manufacturing capacity, manufacturing growth, resources, fuel prices, labor skill. All of these just tell you different things about your car manufacturing business. Infrastructure, for example, sets uh, the expenses of uh, different labor and transportation of your cars, while manufacturing capacity shows you how many people are available to work. The growth is obviously how fast it's going to grow. Resources and fuel prices uh, influence the running and making of your car. Labor skill shows how skilled people are in the location as um, far as uh, their skill in making cargoes 
An average labor wage shows you how much you will pay your workers or how much you should pay your workers. The status is um, what the country is like. Stable means that there is no war going. And corporate tax is the amount of money you need to give to the government. Now, despite London and uh, New York being the easiest, we're going to play on normal and start in Prague, which is the city I'm currently living in, and which is way harder than London or New York. Prague is only 200... wait, 200... no, yeah. 223,000 people, okay, I was reading wrong, I thought it was 2 million, is 223,000 people, it has 223,000 people, and per capita only 207, which is uh, almost half of what, for example, London has with its 367. So obviously you cannot set your prices in Prague very high. The projected growth, however, is pretty good. Uh, the infrastructure and manufacturing cap cap capacity sorry, capacity is not that good, but resources and fuel prices are decent. Furthermore, the corporate tax is only 20% and we only pay our workers 15. So let's start in Prague. Now we need to decide on the company. My name is going to be Alpha Pi Omega for the course of this Let's Play because that's, you know, how I'm rolling on YouTube. And the company name is going to be Praga. Praga was actually a quite famous car company that was born in today's Czech Republic by joint venture of several companies. It is currently defunct, but there are speculations about the company that's owning the brand uh, making comeback with new cars. As far as I know, the company Praga is currently... Uh, they're making weaponry or something like that. Personal weapons, I think, like guns and stuff. But anyway, they used to make pretty nice and pretty good cars, so we are going to try to be them. Despite them official starting in 1907, I think we are a bit early. And our company logo will be three bars. Now, the last setting we have to set here is the AI setting. We have the following choices. We can have 10 largest AIs in the game, 25, random 50, random 100, random 200 or all. I actually don't know how many all are, so I'm gonna go with random 200 because that's what I usually take. Um, but that's a good question, I should figure how many all are. <laughs> so anyway, let's go and finally get into the game. So welcome in the office, this is our nice cool little office. We have a phone, we have newspapers which tell us nothing. We have a teddy bear and a couple other things. There could be a lot of talk about this office and what you can do in it. You can do lobbying, set wages, open offices and yada yada yada. Gonna skip that for now. We'll get to each of these when the timer is right. For now I'm interested in reports. I could just go with telling you this but I'm gonna show you myself. The body style demand shows you roughly how much of different car types are currently wanted. So at this point we have Coupé 2 plus 2, Coupé, uh, wow, Landolet, Microcar, Phaeton, Pickup Truck, Roadster, Roadster 2 plus 2, uh, Compact Car, Sedan, Full Size Sedan, Shooting Brake, Town Car, Touring, Sports and Luxury Sedan. All of these cars we can design right now, but the demand for these is quite different. This is for Europe, Europe Vehicle Style Demand Report. So you can see that there is average demand for compact car, Phaeton, micro car, and there is above average demand for sedan. But we're not going to design sedan for one simple reason. Sedan despite being the most wanted car, is also incredibly expensive and as far as Prague goes, 
there is not a single person that would buy this car from us at profit. So instead we're going to focus on the micro car and Phaeton and we are going to design the parts of our cars so that we can create a micro car and a Phaeton. Now what did I mean about the design of parts is going to be revealed right now. We are heading into the R&D department which basically looks like a garage. If we want to design a car We'll go to Vehicle and Advanced. There is, also, there is also Assisted Design Tool, but I don't like that. And here we can select a body type for a car we want. So we would, for example, start with the Phaeton, because that's my favorite car. But we would need to first select a chassis, engine and gearbox before the game will allow us to actually design the car that we want to sell. Which is a bit of a bummer for us now, but later on becomes much less of a nuisance. Obviously this means that we are now going to design chassis engine and a gearbox. Uh, Vaden, by the way, is an open carriage vehicle without weather protection for passengers. They lack basic things such as windows. But that doesn't make them look bad, at least I think so. So what are we going to start with? Uh, we could start with the chassis. Uh, let's start with the chassis. We'll go in the logical set uh, by the game. So chassis, uh, chassis are the internal framework that supports the running gear and coachwork of the vehicle. They consist of frame, suspensions, components and drivetrain. Space to mount an engine is limited on chassis. Make sure that your chassis is large enough to support any engine you decide to put in it. Also try to match your chassis design with the style of vehicle that you are trying to produce. Which is going to be simple because the only frame we at this point have is the carriage frame. In the early years, in the early years horse carriage frames converted to hold a drivetrain. This conversion is cheap, however very inefficient. No kidding! Though we are lately, uh, later, not lately, we are lately trying to design a frame, but uh, later on we're going to get many more. But for now, it's carriage for us. Now, we have two types of drive train available at this point FR and RR. FR is the one we're going with from the engine. Rear wheel the drive was the most common drivetrain up until the 90s. By placing the engine in the front, the vehicle, and powering the rear wheels, the vehicle maintains good weight ratio. By powering the wheels in the rear, the vehicle will have better traction under acceleration. This layout is simple to design and to build. Front engine rear wheeled drive vehicles are slightly more expensive to manufacture, but this is compensated by increased performance under acceleration. We could also go with the uh, RR drivetrain, but uh, as it was mentioned, the front, uh, front engine rear wheeled drive is the best one. Um, we're going to choose a front suspension now and the rear suspension now. There are basically three possibilities, the leaf spring, sliding pillar and trailing arm. Again, these are the things we have now, later on we'll get uh, access to way more complicated system. But the leaf spring is what we want now. Leaf springs are one of the earliest forms of springs. Leaf springs consist of a number of flat metal sheets laid on top of each other. This helps distribute the load and is typically found on cargo vehicles. Leaf springs are durable, cheap and easy to design. They perform below average on every other metric, however. Which is our choice now. They are cheap. And cheap is what we want because Prague cannot handle expensive luxurious cars. Not now. Not that we would sell in Prague anyway, but that's a whole other story. And we need to name this chassis. Now, I was thinking if we are going to use check names, you know, to make it uh, a bit more believable and do role playing, but then I decided that to make you guys orient in what I'm actually doing in the game, it's gonna be better than um, 
it's going to be better to use English names than to use Czech names. So the chassis we're going to design is going to call, be called Butterfly. Why? Because it's cheap and light. Now, if you thought that was the actual design, <laughs> no, 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 no. We are going to start designing it now. So if you look about the screen, it shows you that we are using the carriage frame, FR drivetrain, weave spring, and leaf spring. Here you can see the wheelbase, the track, the frame weight, frame weight, yes, and the maximum engine size. Below you can see the completion date of our project. If we started it now, it will be finished in uh, wait one. Oh, on the first, uh, sorry, first May of 1900. Yes, I was confused there for a moment. The month is the um, smallest amount of time that the game throws at you. So basically one turn is one month in the game. Estimated unit cost at this point is 79 bucks if we do no changes. And the project cost is 147, 231 bucks. That's not that much, is it? Well, actually, it's pretty cool as far as I am concerned. However, we need to change this. So we have the following possibilities how to influence our uh, chassis. First thing is the chassis frame size or dimensions. So as we are going for a microcar or a phaeton, we're going to make it very small. So the length of the chassis is going down and you can see that it's changing our wheelbase, our track, our frame weight as well. If we went all the way up, we could make a 312, Jesus Christ, that's hard, uh, <laughs> a frame, but we're going all the way down. Notice that it's changing the statistics here as well. As it's getting smaller, it's also making the chassis perform a bit better and have it bigger strength because, you know, it's smaller. But we're going to change that soon enough. Uh, the frame height is also going down. We can go up, uh, but that would just make it more expensive and I don't really want that. So frame height is going down, frame weight is going down as well which is going to slightly increase the cost of the project, but make it, uh, make each unit that we produce cheaper. And the maximum supported engine length and engine width is going down as well. So we are now down to maximum engine size of 304 millimeters times 304 millimeters. Awesome! We have a 30 centimeter engine. How awesome is that? Well, actually, it's quite okay because our first engine is going to be very small. Now, the chassis design suspension, we're going to be cheap on as well. We're going to make it... Actually, let's, uh, let's make it a bit more comfortable. This one doesn't cost that much. So the stability will be steady. The right comfort we're going to go down on though. The performance... How much does this change? It? Oh, not much. So let's make it concerned as well. The braking though is going down and durability going down as well. So that makes our chassis estimated unit cost 61 bucks. Design focus. Design focus is something I'm gonna leave for the end. First component quality. And here we have a very simple task. Lower, 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 and lower. So what this actually makes <laughs> is we use the cheapest material, the cheapest components, the cheapest technology, and the worst manufacturing techniques. But you can see that the estimated unit cost is now at 33 bucks and project cost at 33,000 bucks, which is really nice. However, the statistics are appalling. And we're going to battle this by focusing on the design. So what we are being cheap on while manufacturing the actual product, we are going to avoid 
or make better my careful work of design. So I'm just gonna bump everything up and you can see how it improves the performance of the carriage, uh, of the carriage chassis we're designing. Uh, it doesn't even change the estimated unit cost by much, but it actually changes the project cost by quite a few thousand bucks, but still manageable, you know. The bad part though is the completion date. It's going to take eight months now to design our butterf butterfly, butterfly, <laughs> our butterfly chassis. But I'm okay with that. That's how I roll. So we are going to design this one and move on to the engine 